Ultra Natty is a singer, songwriter, record producer and DJ who's achieved success on the pop charts with songs such as Free, If You Could Read My Mind and Automatic. And now she's confirmed rumours of a new studio album titled Ultra by dropping its lead single Miracle, which will be out on all streaming platforms from Monday the 6th of June. And she's with us here just now, of course. Good afternoon. How are you today? Hi, what's up? Up, what's up? Good day. Now, this new song, Miracle, how would you describe it? Because it's quite upbeat and dancey, isn't it? It is. I mean, that, I mean, I really feel like that's what we needed. Mm. I wrote most of the, um, I wrote pretty much 90% of my new album um, during the pandemic. Wow. So I felt like a lot of the songs that I was writing were speaking to what um, some of the angst and fear and drama um, and instability that people were feeling, but there was also a, ne- a necessity as an artist and songwriter to give mm-hmm. people a bit of hope and inspiration. So Miracle drills down on and finding our power within ourselves. It really speaks mainly, um, I geared it towards women mm. and women's empowerment, especially women of color, uh, marginalized communities, to really just speak to like our, what we're all going through and find finding that space within ourselves to appreciate who we are and what makes us special and as mm-hmm. individuals, and collectively as you know as, as all people here on this this little ball in the air here we're yeah. all just trying to figure it out as we go so it's a bit of inspiration behind it yeah and if you're being completely honest how long did it take you to write this song in particular this song actually came pretty quickly um mm. you know when you've got days and hours to whittle away trying yeah. to just you know just um doing what you do which is which was actually one of the brighter points for me during the pandemic, because I'm yeah. usually writing in the midst of touring a lot and being torn a, diff- a lot of different ways um, and having to switch focus and switch gears all the time. So it was really great. And it was um, cathartic for me, actually, mm-hmm. to kind of um, get up every day and pick up the thread of where I left off the day before when the yeah. idea concept was right, was fresh to be able to kind of um, play with that in that moment and see mm-hmm. where it lended itself. And this track was one of the really easy ones to come together. I just kind of vibed off off the groove um which gave me a very afro rhythmic uh kind of feel Mm. so you know if i just lay in the pocket and let the song sort of speak for itself yeah and what is that process when you write a song normally for me it works a lot of different ways because i write under so many different crazy circumstances you know um and having been doing it for so long thank thank god you know that i've been blessed to be able to make a career out of this Mm. um you you find all kinds of different circumstances So it's really important to be versatile, to be nimble and open to the process. So for me, with this particular moment, again, I was home every day. So I had tracks from different people that I wanted to write with. Some people that may have hit me up and been like, hey, I've got some tracks, you know, I'm doing some writing. Are you interested in collaborating? Or people that I was interested in working with and I just kind of reached out to and was like, hey, what's up? I'm home. I'm chilling. I'm working on my next album. So, you know, send me some tracks. What do you got in the archives? You know, what have you been Mm -hmm. working on? Um, Or, you know, there may be someone I want to work with and we build a concept from the ground up. So all of those things will be the story of what the the Ultra album is about. Um, This particular song, Gianni Romano, um, they kind of hit me a few times with a lot of different tracks and my schedule was really crazy. So I think they may have even sent me this particular track maybe months in advance, maybe even a year in advance. I can't keep track, (laughs) but it's kind of like, okay, I have every intention on working on this song, on this track, please, you know, just, just bear with my crazy schedule. And then the pandemic hit. So that shut everything down. And and I I was able to like, okay, let me put my folder together of these tracks that I have that are really interesting that I want to double back and now address. So once I was able to do that, then I had this, this really great backing track that was kind of bare bones, bare minimum, gave me a lot of room to just, um, experiment with a story. And mm. like I said, I, I kind of listened to what the the drums were doing, what the rhythm yeah. was doing. It had a, a really kind of um, cultural essence to it. And I just kind of lay back in the pocket and bounce off that groove mm. and let the let the song kind of breathe and then speak to 
what I needed to feel at that moment, what I, how I needed to remember who I am and what, what I bring to the table as an artist and as an individual, and then also relay that to other people out there to find that same kind of inspiration because they often look to artists to help tell their stories and to help them um, just kind of speak to what they're feeling, but maybe can't, don't have the platform to say themselves. Yeah. And did you have to record a lot of it at home maybe, or did you still manage to get to a studio? Well, I have a, you know, I have my, my studio situation in my home t- mm. uh, to get my process done. And, you know, that, that happened years ago, just kind of out of circumstance and out of necessity, yeah. uh, you know, as technology took over and um, you just kind of needed to be in two places at one time. Mm. So over the, over the years, I've just acquired more and more things to be able to, to do that myself and produce my vocals myself at home. Um, and that was pretty much the way I did it. So I just uh, sat at my computer with my, you know, com- with my Word doc open and just started letting the song speak and with the microphone open and just kind of humming ideas and things and fleshing it out as you go. And you double back and scratch that. And oh, this thing off the top of the head was really good right here. Let me drill down on that a little bit more, you know? Yeah. What can we expect from the rest of the album as well? Is it quite similar to this song? I think there's a lot of different kind of energies and vibes going on on the Ultra album. I think what's important mm-hmm. is that it's a collective collective of my stories and the different vibes that I feel because I'm, I I don't find myself to be um, sort of a one trick pony or um, staying in one pocket all the time. I really yeah. go a lot of different places. And I think that's because at the very crux of it, I'm a soul, I'm a songwriter um, and a storyteller. And so, yeah. and I, and I love dance music and I love house music and I love being able to go in all those different places and the, in the umbrella of, of this genre allows you to experiment in so many different places. So I think that the album will be a great example of, you know, what, what my place is in those different place, different uh, sounds and stories. Yeah. And it's interesting you mentioned earlier that the new song Miracle is what we need right now after two years of COVID. Oh and my God. <laughs> in a way, your classic song Free, which is 25 years old this year, mm-hmm. that's what we need as well because we want to be free, don't we? We absolutely do and always will. And mm. that song will always resonate with with people, with the generations, because in its uh, in its entirety, it it encapsulates what a lot of people cannot always articulate, yeah. and it gives people that feeling of empowerment, of release, of um, being understood, and being able to say, "This is this is how I feel, and this is what I need to move through this whatever this particular thing might be." And everybody's mm-hmm. story is different. Collectively, we were all feeling you know, the, the massive uh, sadness and drama and um, you just, just craziness of what the pandemic was. Like collectively, yeah. everyone around the world in this moment, you know, was feeling the same thing. It was so crazy to, to have that be the reality. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was speaking to a lot of people and just feeling trapped and, and afraid. There was a lot of fear in the air um yeah. and you needed to, you needed that anchor you needed an anchor of some of some sort to to make you feel okay it's, it's going to be all right like we're, we're all in this together we're linked together in this chain and it's going to be okay yeah. that's important for for what free is um for nostalgia for the future for our, our current need to be buoyed but then you know i'm also always a forward thinking artist so i never rest on the the classic hits that I've garnered over the years. You know, for me, yeah. it's always still about all of the the different stories and um, and musicality that I like to express. And I I'm so happy, you know, that the the, the folks out there around the world are still open to that from me. They're still open to hearing you know, different music from me, you know, continually free. Yes. It has been like such a great pinnacle and such a great song to have in my catalog. Mm. You know, I still sing it every single show, every every single (laughs) show since 1997, when it first came out, March 31st, 1997, (laughs) you know, and and that's a blessing to be able to do that. But it's also important to continue as an artist, to feed your soul and continue to feed, you know, your legacy and Mm. what music is doing currently. Yeah, absolutely. And even before COVID, everybody knew that song. Mm -hmm. What do you think the secret behind it is to still be popular after 25 years? I think there was so much organic 
and risky elements mm. put together to to create that work because we had no idea and we being myself mood to swing and my management um peace biscuit because we yeah. the three entities the three of us collectively crafted this song on all of the different levels and different elements that brought together what people now hear as a, as a final work we had no we had nothing to lose at the time i was no longer assigned to my major label deal um, I was embarking on a deal with a what we call a mini major with Strictly Rhythm. Um, if this was a new kind of song and, and, and situation for them as well, as they had never signed an artist who was coming from the kind of experience that I had come from um, as a songwriter and as an artist, I was already well established. So they kind of just let me get on with whatever I was going to do. And um, that was a new thing for them. So there were a lot of firsts in there. So we took a lot of risks and we just kind of said, you know, let's just write the song that we want to write and not pay attention to what's going on in charts, where music is moving, you know, all of those things. Like, let's just put the best of what we soulfully feel a good record should be and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. Do you have any other songs that maybe didn't do as well in the charts, but you feel deserve equal recognition? Oh, there's always millions of songs. Um, You know, I've been a, a songwriter from the beginning of my career since the first track that I wrote in 1989 with It's Over Now mm. and, you know, um, released nine, you know, full length albums. So there are a lot of songs that are loved and adored by different collectives of people yeah. that may not have reached the commercial level of success as Free or Found a Cure um, in that way, but are loved just, just as much and, and resonate just as much with people in the circles that, that, you know, that love it and get it songs like twisted or um, from even album tracks, like uh, situation critical, the actual album track, or, you know, some of my really early album works like desire. um, I felt like that, uh, Stranger Than Fiction album came at a time when the music business was in a complete flip flop. Yeah. Um, after a Napster and file sharing kind of tanked oh, yeah. everything and the, the business was spiraling out, it was a really terrible time to release an album. So a lot of those songs from that album did not get the um, commercial push behind them as the situation critical album that brought you free and found a cure and and new kind of medicine. So it was a matter of circumstances and timing that threw some of that off, but um, people love those records. And there's a story with, with each album in an era in growth and my life and development and what was happening in music at the time. So I don't, um, I don't necessarily have any regrets in terms of how things go. I feel like Mm -hmm. the universe always, always conspires to have, me come out on top because I'm always working from a positive standpoint and I'm always continually working forward. Yeah. And that's interesting that you managed to get your hits in maybe at the perfect time before file sharing became a thing. Oh my gosh, it was so crazy. (laughs) That was a really, that I mean, that was like almost as crazy as the pandemic, except for being on lockdown and and obviously losing a tremendous amount of people in a very short span of time. There's nothing that will ever be comparable to that. But, um, you know, that that, that moment when, and I believe it was in the early 2000s, somewhere around um, 04, 05, two, three, three to five, something like that. It was when it really hit hard um, and lab- major labels were folding mm. left, right and center. They were um, being uh, just dissolved or or actually merging with other labels. And, and it was just like a major crash and burn going on. So the whole yeah. the whole industry was spiraling out. The whole business model of making music was blowing up. And a lot of us that were signed to labels really had no idea where everything was going to land. And it was from that point, even in that that crazy, ridiculous moment, the benefit that happened was that we came to, we being, again, myself and my management came to a decision that this it makes no sense to try to now go try to find another record deal mm. after you know that whole thing just went haywire i had great success with uh a&m in the uk um after free was signed to ampm and then the a&m label picked it up from there the major label um took it from the dance imprint off the label <laughs> but 
it was um it was the time to then move completely independent yeah. and so that's what we did and we've been independent ever since then and continually releasing records and then you know releasing hits like automatic after that point you know those things happened everything happened in a in a really crazy traumatic way but out of that it moves you to your next level of growth mm. and development now as well you are also celebrating 30 years in the music industry and you're doing this by releasing two of your earliest albums on mm-hmm. digital platforms for the very first time right yeah yeah it'll be digital and actually it'll be um vinyl mm. as well we're trying to put it on all formats so situation critical and stranger than fiction are you know we're working really hard behind the scenes with yeah. BMG who now control those works um, and revive them for Strictly Rhythm imprint and remaster and re-release them to the world, re-promote yeah. the whole, you know, the whole shebang. So <laughs> really it's kind of crazy. Like I've never been at this juncture in, mm. in my life where I'm actually working on three albums wow. at the same time because <laughs> the brand new album, the ultra album coming out this summer yeah. and then, you know, to, to Two previous albums that were mm. that were really loved and I, and I get it from fans so often that they, we, they really love to have these albums again especially in yeah. vinyl now you know if you missed it the first go around so that feels really good to me for those records to get another day in the sun and yeah. to be appreciated again yeah and when can we expect the full album to be out for Ultra? which one Ultra. <laughs> the Ultra <laughs> <laughs> the Ultra album, we are, we're shooting towards uh, July to get that out. We really want that out for summer. Great. Well, in the meantime, where will we be able to find the latest song, Miracle? Miracle, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be on all platforms when it drops in the early June. Yes, it's going to be on all platforms. Um, and, you know, I'm really excited what people will think, you know, yeah. I'm really excited for people to get new music. Um, we, we did put out uh, Supernatural last summer and yeah. Um, kind of, you know, release remixes over the last six months. And that was sort of a brief introduction um, of new music coming. And that was on uh, Skint, backed by BMG UK as well, with Funk Cartel out of the UK. And I've had a lot, a long, wonderful romance with the UK from the beginning of my career. So I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to um, you know, this new this new track and seeing what you guys think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, many thanks for joining us on the show today. It's been great talking to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.